Hey guys, welcome back. So we are following up with the art box action flips, um, but instead this is series one instead of uh, the premiere series. So this is the premiere series and I'll explain the difference in a second. What was really nice in general, I go over when I received nice packages through eBay, um, they had put it in like one of those flat rate mailboxes or mailing boxes and they actually backed it up with a really, really heavy, nice, durable, um, bubble mill. What's funny though is they didn't put anything inside the bubble mailer. Um, they just used it as, as bubble wrap backing. So it's really nice. It's unused. So, um, even though like technically I only pay like 20 cents, 50 cents for a bubble mailer. This one's a little bit bigger and this one's really nice. So, uh, extra 50 cents for me, I guess. Um, so I'll probably use it to mail stuff later because that's a hundred percent brand new. So I ordered 12 of these. It was an already open box. And I guess the person either was tracking the value and got tired of waiting or, um, or they just, uh, they didn't know how much it was. They just went off what they paid back in the day because the box looked really old. So they did send me what was the remainder of the box and it was really beat up and old. So there should be 12 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And the reason why I'm counting is because this just came in the mail. So I literally opened the box and grabbed these and came down here um, to the uh, little recording studio. So I literally just got these. Um, hopefully none of these are resealed. So we're just gonna do the basic check. Uh, yeah, should be. That shouldn't be a reseal. So we're gonna go ahead and open these. And once we open them, I'll be able to explain with the first few the difference between the premiere and the series one. Besides them just being a newer generation, like what the actual difference is. Okay, so this is the backing. So what we're trying to get, hopefully, is we're hoping to pull a Charizard. Charizard is a thing you can pull. Now with these, you get um, at least with this one, you get four action flips plus the one bonus sticker. So this is our one bonus sticker, and we've got a. Hitmonlee, doing his Hitmonlee stuff. Oh, so I guess I was wrong. Okay, interesting. So what I thought, oh, so that goes through all three. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. So, I mean, these are series ones. They have series one on the back. I was tracking that series one only had the one Pokemon it has on it. I wasn't tracking that they actually had all the evolutions. I thought that's what the difference between that and Premiere was. Just Premiere, you just have the one Pokemon. That's really interesting because some people are selling series ones like Charizards and it's just the Charizard. So I wonder how that works out. And then also there's some other differences like one, it will say Premier Edition on the back and then on top of that, it has the yellow border. All these, I guess we, you would consider these full arts uh, except for the bottom because there is no border on them. Interesting. So the stickers are worth something too. Um, right now everything looks like it's in really, really, really solid condition. Um, you can actually get these things PSA rated, which I, I do intend on doing, especially if I pull um, a Charizard. Now, I can't tell if that's reseal. I don't think it is because it's really, it's matching that rivet in there perfectly. So the reason why I'm not saying it's reseal is, um, and, and what I'm looking for is when things are resealed, if you pull on this middle thing, and some people have found a way around it, but I don't think that's the case with this. Um, these look genuinely, you know, to fit the description on age and everything, but a reseal, uh, especially with booster packs, when you pull on this, this part won't move because they tend to reseal it from the top. There's ways to reseal it down the line with glue, um, but uh, typically they'll use a heat sealer and they'll reseal it right here. And when you go to pull on this, this part where my left thumb at uh, will stay down. So these, I don't think these are resealed. Um, one, because it's just not that too much of a hot item. Uh, the price was a little alarming in terms of how much I paid for this, but I just, okay, that's a little weird that I got the sticker exactly twice. Um, it's not too, too alarming. We'll continue. So we've got a Gloom Vile Plume Oddish, uh, an Ekans Arbok, a Eevee Flareon, and a Beedrill Weedle uh, Kakuna. So that's pretty cool. These are all really nice. These are all in really good shape, which is good. That's what we're looking for. As I said, we do intend to PSA these. Now, these aren't super hot items, but still certain ones do go for decent prices. So, you know, we're hoping to get a Blastoise, a Venusaur, and a Charizard. Um, those are always hot collectible ones to get. Um, okay, I don't... Hmm, I, I, I don't know what my odds are of that to get Mankey three times. Um, and I'm tracking there is quite a variety of stickers, so 
don't know how I feel about that. So Gyarados is nice. Um, it's a good pull. Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar, and uh, Slowpoke, uh, Slowbro, and Onyx. That's funny to me that Onyx never had like a uh, earlier version of himself. And then eventually he came out with Steelix, which is pretty cool. And Onyx is like, or at least in the show, he was huge. Um, but yeah, I don't understand why why the premieres are worth less than Series 1. I mean, granted, Series 1s are, you know, a little bit older, but really, I don't understand the difference. I figured I had was under the assumption that Series 1 only came with one Pokemon, but that's not the case from what I'm seeing. So that's interesting. Okay, I don't... I have to do some research. That's getting me mad. I don't know why I would pull Mankey four times. Um, if we pull, oh, but we do get it. See, I don't know if these are resealed because I'm getting Mankey all the time, but I just got a Blastoise and an Articuno. And, you know, those are ones that you want. People really want these. Um, Flareon's okay. And, uh, Muck Grimer's okay, but Articuno and Blastoise, that's like what you really, really, really want. So I don't, I don't think these are resealed. I just don't understand why I keep pulling Mankey for the sticker. I don't think... Maybe when they did a sticker for an entire art box of these, they always put in the exact same sticker. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I'm going to have a lot of Mankey stickers, so we'll probably use one of these as a giveaway later on. Um, interesting. So we got Primer Muck again. Uh, Clefairy Clefable. Is it Raichu? Oh, it's Electabuzz. Still cool, still cool. And a Ninetales uh, Vulpix. Okay, okay. These are, you know, still pretty decent, and they're all, you know, in great shape because they're, you know, packed fresh. Um, so that's good. Okay, that must be the bottom. See, I don't think it's resealed. I think the top is just the way it fits the rivet and the way they were made. That's just how it works. Okay, yeah, it looks like I'm going to get Mankey for every last one. So, you know, I guess guess along if you want to feel special because you're going to get it right every time. We got a Meowth Persian. Um, Graveler Golem Geodude. Geodude is always funny because he just floats. Like, why would I evolve to have legs if I'm already floating? They could have gone a completely different direction with that if you think about it. Hitmonlee again, and the uh, Dugong Seal again. Okay. Hopefully we pull a Charizard, we pulled Blastoise, and that's pretty significant. Uh, a little concerning, because... Hmm, maybe not so concerning. <laughs> is it the Mankey sticker again? Oh, hey, I don't, I, I don't think it's resealed because the Blastoise and Articuno is in there. And as far as I'm tracking, a Blastoise Articuno is a pretty good pull. These are all in great condition, so that's, that's what we're looking for. That's fantastic. I'm probably going to get all of these PSA rated because they should all get 9s to 10s. And um, that makes it worth it. I, I guess we're going to do some giveaways with these Mankey stickers. So we've got the Beedrill one again. Oh, we got Jinx. That's good. And it's the Blackface Jinx. I wonder if that's worth anything. If you don't know, Blackface Jinx is a banned card because obviously it's a Pokemon that resembles Blackface. Now, Japan, these are, you know, Pokemon from Japan, so they didn't have an issue with this. But in America, I'm surprised this made it to America because these are in English. Interesting. It must have been an oversight. EV Flareon and Horsey Seedra. Interesting. Yeah, so there are some cool series out there. I don't think I've done a series on banned Pokemon cards. I just feel as though it's kind of overdone, and I don't feel like presenting that information. Um, there are some other people you can look up. So just look up banned Pokemon cards, and you'll see them talk about. There's quite a few. Um, so yeah, it's like we are definitely getting all Mankeys. We got a Cloister Sheller. We got a Muck Grimer again. We got an Electabuzz and a Kingler Krabby. All right, so there's only three packs left. Hopefully we can either get a Venusaur Raichu or Charizard. Hopefully, you know, all of those, but we'll, uh, we'll see. Let's see how these differ, by the way. So here's Kingler Series 1 to, or, or Krabby to Kingler, and then we've got Krabby to Kingler. So there is some slight differences. Um, the Krabby in this one seems to be much smaller. On top of that, the wording is off. That's not just you. I wonder if that counts as an error, because when I have the Krabby wording up 
on this one, the king alert image is up. I wonder if that counts as error. That's really distinct. Like, that's not like barely. That's like spot on distinct. Huh. Interesting. So these art boxes, you know, they were things that I had as a kid, but understanding what counts as a misprint or, you know, what is like a, a high collectible on them actually is a new world for me. Um, you know, there's just so many Pokemon items and merchandise out there that you don't know. <laughs> that makes me so suspicious. Oh, right, so I think I got all the dogs, Yaltion, Vaporeon, Flareon, so that's good. Um, got Aerodactyl. Oh, Mewtwo's a high hit for this. And uh, Pidgey, Pidgeot, and Pidgeotto. So that's surprising they had all of them because originally they didn't have um, Pidgeot. But Mewtwo's a good hit for this, so that's good. It's nice to see some different ones. I always get concerning. I always get concerned when I see uh, when I see too many of the same ones. Um, still two packs to go. Still hoping that maybe we'll hit that Charizard. Um, I'm tracking Charizard is in Series One. I'm also tracking apparently Mankey stickers are in Series One. Oh, so Zapdos. That's pretty sweet. We got Zapdos. We got Articuno. So we haven't pulled Moltres yet. Um, I'm actually hoping we don't pull Moltres because I actually ordered Moltres as an individual in the mail that's still on its way. I still have another, this is a decent item in my opinion, but I have a really big item coming in the mail. I mean, for this channel, it's fairly big. Um, okay, so Mankey, so this is the last pack. Uh, Dodo, Do Trio. Okay. Oh, so we got Venusaur, but I don't think we got Charizard from the looks of it. Um, got a Vileplume Oddish again, and pulled a Vaporeon. So, no Charizard. I mean, this kind of shows that, you know, no matter what, they always made sure he was hard to pull. Um, but we got Venusaur Blastoise, two of the Legendary Birds, and we have a third one guaranteed on the way. So, that is nice, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry, I didn't really get too, too close with the camera. I still don't have the new phone yet. Um, this is still from the iPhone 8. The iPhone 12 is still in the mail. Um, the only thing I don't like about these is it, it is, you know, and it's not, it's not as they were purposely made bad. You know, this is just because these are so old. They didn't have really like, I don't know what you'd call this technology, but like the, you know, image foil technology 100% down pat. So they actually put a lot of work into these. Um, and uh, it was when Pokemon was just beginning, really. So it wasn't like, you know, they were doing their best. They are like, hey, maybe this show will take off. Maybe it won't. Um, maybe this will be a big thing. You know, people were still really undecisive on Pokemon. That's why all of the old, old stuff is worth so much. Because people really weren't certain to collect it or not. And that's the issue you have with the new stuff is now, you know, it's proven that Pokemon is a, a collectible. You know, it's the highest grossing media of $90 billion, um, which is... And that's a true thing. Looked it up. It's a it's a huge company, huge franchise. I bet you this is worth quite a bit. This is a a no no. <laughs> um, getting the dogs is nice. Um, I do prefer the cards over these, um, but I just remember having these as a kid though for sure. Um, I still don't think even in this form I didn't have Charizard. The only time I had Charizard as a kid was actually through the tops cards. Um, and those are actually still worth something, too, if you get them in good condition. Especially if you get a hollow one, they can still be worth 100 plus bucks. Um, but yeah, I think they're all going to be worth PSA rating, um, just because they're all pack, pack pulls. And the good news is, is each one of these actually goes for a decent little bit. Um, and, you know, the main difference between these and cards is there is no hollow foil, it's just the Pokemon. Um, I mean, some other difference, obviously, is like the size, the playability... Um, but these weren't that heavily collected. So even though they're not usually damaged, um, because they weren't heavily collected, there isn't, like, a, a mass amount of, like, Pokemon cards. You know, people still talk about... They talk about Gengar as a favorite for almost everybody. Um, people talk about, like, oh, there's, you know, less and less original Pokemon cards. Yeah, but when you go on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, it's amazing how you still seem to find them. Just because there was still so many and so many people bought them. Sure, the population of them is definitely going down, but um, or has gone down due to damage and stuff. But I would say a lot of them are getting preserved right now. People are doing their best to save them. Oh, okay, so that was the episode. It was just going through the Series 1s, hoping to pull a Charizard on Series 1. It's really a shame we didn't pull a Pikachu either, because Pikachu and Raichu are the main 
parts of this, the main fronts of this, and we didn't pull either one of those, and that's a good pull too. But yeah, we didn't pull Charizard, and to be honest, I don't know if you can pull Charizard in these. I think you get Jim with a special, special little uh, different pack, but nonetheless, this was Series 1, and if you're going to get any, get Series 1 over Premier Edition, just because Series 1 has a higher collectability to it, and um, generally it doesn't cost too, too, too much more, and you can get some good pulls, so... Um, like a good pull isn't like cost so i got this pack of 12 i think you know if you include shipping i think i paid maybe 40 bucks that sounds like a lot but 40 bucks for 12 it's probably like three to four bucks per um it's actually less than four bucks per so about three bucks per now granted that was a deal they generally go for way more these packs tend to go for sometimes seven to sometimes like 12 dollars a piece um, they do wild they do very wildly it's just people still haven't really figured out whether or not they're worth a lot and people who know that they're going to be are already going to head, go ahead and ask the price they want and i think they'll get it now with these manky stickers we'll probably give a few of these away um and if you somehow missed it i don't know how you would we're talking about these they are still something you can psa you can almost psa anything really to be honest from what i'm coming to learn um granted the psa is very slow update to that they finally replied to my email asked them for an eta on the 15 cards that we sent in and they gave me this super super long-winded email completely avoiding the question they basically still gave that generic excuse of sorry we've had a huge flare-up we're not right now you know moving on economy services and things like that granted i don't think mine were economy mine were 40 business day services which i think is faster than economy but regardless um they didn't answer the ETA question, and all I could do is follow up with my thing saying all I asked for was an ETA. It's really kind of silly. Um, I I I don't know how I feel about them, uh, you know, using excuses and stuff. But it is what it is. Um, right now they control the power, but I think BGS is really catching up on them. I think. People are starting to realize, and I don't know why it came about. I guess there was a thing way back in the past. It's kind of silly to hold this against such a large company. And I guess no one really verified it, to be honest, as far as I could tell. But there's a story that people didn't like BGS because their grading while very too wildly, while PSA was very set and much more stringent. So a PSA 10 was an actual 10, while BGS 10 may be like a PSA 7. But I don't think it's the case anymore, and there's a lot of reasons why I prefer BGS over PSA 1. I just think that BGS symbol with the wreath just looks way better. I think the PSA label could use some cleanup. It's just a white label with a red border. And then the other issue you have, for, or I have for, as an issue, is PSA does not tell you why your car got the grade it got, while BGS will actually put on the label where it stored points and where it didn't store points and how it averaged out. So... I know BGS does service, I believe corners, centering, and I think there's one more, um, but regardless, the BGS at least tells you, like, why you got what you got for your grade, and, you know, it's something to help you look for as a tool for what to look for next time when you're buying raw cards that you want to get graded, you know what to look out for. So, it's a little silly, because the cases seem pretty similar. I think the only thing I noticed is I think the PSA case does do a better job of holding the card still. You don't want your card flinging around in a hard plastic case like that because it will get damaged over time. Granted, usually you're not flinging your Beckett grading system cards or your PSA cards around, and it is what it is. But uh, I don't know if BGS grades these. I know PSA grades these, so I may have to go through PSA, and I'm hoping, due to me doing a build-up for my PSA grade services, because I'm about to send 100-plus cards in at once once December is over, I'm also hoping they'll finally open up the uh, quarterly specials for Pokemon cards. They've shut those down ever since the gigantic blow up. And it's pretty aggravating because I have a platinum PSA membership, which kind of nullifies the point. You don't need a PSA membership to send stuff to the PSA. You just want a PSA membership to get a decent discount. Well, even if I sent 100 cards in to the PSA, uh, after everything is said and done, I still want it break even, depending on the discount. Um, generally, I think they go to $8.50 a card versus $10 per card when they usually do a quarterly special, but I doubt they'll even go that low, and uh, it's just going to minimize the damage I got from getting the Platinum membership, so I wouldn't suggest it. They don't seem to treat you any different, in my opinion, and there's also some other things that I, I question, and I need to try and find some forums on, so, uh, and it was interesting. I was watching Vintage Pokemon Hunter Brothers. He finally got his graded cards, and a lot of them 
Um, granted, I didn't see his cards in person. We don't know each other in person. Um, we just respond on each other's channels pretty actively. It was really funny because I was really surprised the grades some of his cards got. Granted, I can only see what I can see on camera and what he points out. I'm not saying he tried to avoid anything, but sometimes you just miss stuff. Um, but the thing is, is I have sent cards in that I used Express and Super Express, and with those, you're declaring the value of your card. And the cards I sent him, in my opinion, were fairly damaged. It was a Shadowless Blastoise and a Shadowless Charizard, and I expected him to get a 6 to 7, and that was being hopeful. I figured they would actually get a 5 to 6. They both came back 8. It raises the question... Did the PSA give those cards that grade because I paid them however much with a declared value on that card and they based the grading to that declared value? And it'll be interesting to find out. That's what we're really waiting on those original 15 cards because um, although granted most of them will fall into the declared value that I put on, it'll be interesting to see how they come back because I don't agree with the grades that Pokemon Hunter Brothers got for some of his cards. Now, I definitely agree with all the cards that he got 8 plus on. Um, I think that was really good. Um, I, I, I don't... I can't verify if he was supposed to get PSA 10 on any of his cards, but for some of his cards that like he got PSA 5 and he got some that were 6 and 7, uh, they looked more like 7 to 8s to me, so it was really strange. Um, granted that, as I said, I did not see his cards in person, and I'm not a PSA grader by any means either. Um, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I think it's interesting to look into. If anyone here has been doing grades for a while, um, let us know what you think on this video. I know this is at the end of the video, and we'll probably bring this discussion up later in a different video, but... It definitely seems from the little bit that I've seen that depending on what you do as your declared value is what the PSA will send you as a grade, which isn't how that's supposed to work. You shouldn't be able to pay for your grades. Um, and I just say this because I have some cards that are already graded and they just looked way nicer than the ones that I sent in. So I was really surprised. I was happy with the grades they got, not arguing that. But it makes me nervous with these other cards that I've sent in that I've paid way less for a longer grading time. And for me, that should be the only difference. It should just be the amount of time it takes to grade the cards. It shouldn't affect the grade that comes back for the cards. Um, because that just doesn't make any sense. Um, if you can pay for grades, then I will pay for grades every time and take advantage of that service. But I'm really hoping that's not the case. I'm really hoping that cards get graded how they're supposed to be graded based on their condition, not based on what I paid or anyone's paid. Um, I'm not sponsoring or bashing the PSA in a conspiracy theory. I'm just trying to find out some information based on what other people have experienced. Um, the only thing I'm bashing the PSA on and will continue to bash them on is their time and service management. Um, I don't have a huge issue with if you're a little bit late. Uh, especially there is a global pandemic, understood, but I also understand how grading cards work. Uh, the fact that they say they need a large influx of employees due to COVID doesn't make sense. Now, due to the amount of cards influx, sure, that makes sense, but blaming it on COVID doesn't make sense, and the reason why is because when they grade those cards, they grade them in individual separate spaces and rooms. They don't grade them together as a team. So it's really silly when they say that because COVID hasn't affected their spacing issues. Now, I hear, I've heard some rumors on terms of like they desanitize the, or sanitize the cards as they come in or whatever for COVID issues, but once again, that's just a rumor, so I can't confirm that. I haven't been to their facility. I would love to, but it's kind of far away, um, but on top of that, I just, um, I understand they've had a massive influx. However, when you have a set standard and people have paid for it, you fill that standard. Um, when other people are still coming in, um, they're not grandfathered in. You change the amount of time required. You don't do it the opposite way. You don't go ahead and say, okay, well, these guys are paying for the faster service, so we're going to go ahead and just nullify all the other people who paid for a certain service. They still paid for that service. They still paid for a 40-day turnaround. Um, business day, by the way, which is super long. Um, so you, you don't just go ahead and change the rules after they've already paid for that service. And if, and if you are going to change the rules, you you need to make sure that you, you know, give them some sort of retribution. You don't just say, oh, hey, well, yeah, we charged you the full price on that original service that you didn't know was going to change. Um, so here we go. And now you have to wait however long. And if it seems like I'm frustrated, it's not just because of the waiting and anticipation. Like, it would be nice to get those cards and be able to see them and see what they got and help me figure out what else to send in. And I just had to skip those steps myself and just start sending stuff in willy-nilly. 
But for a lot of us, especially as smaller YouTubers, we're basing a lot of our funding based on what we can sell. Granted, I can sell a lot of raw cards, but the issue with that is it becomes a little bit more difficult in terms of the any sort of profit return, if there will be any. And then also on top of that, um, you know, people are very iffy. You have a lot of wishy-washy back. It's a lot more discussions versus me just set selling, flat selling stuff. People know what they're buying when it's PSA graded. Oh, this is a PSA 8. It's got the number to it. It's got the name. It's got the title. It's got the serial number. It has the population report. It has the authenticity. There's a lot of fake cards out there. PSA authenticates the card once you get it graded. So it's kind of silly. Um, but that's what I would prefer. You know, everyone prefers something that's authenticated when you have a market that has a ton of fakes in it, that's for sure. And they like to know what they're buying. Um, and on top of that, uh, it's already sealed and protected and it should just continue to go up in value versus, you know, it, it can still go down in value if your stuff isn't properly sealed, protected, penny sleeve, stuff like that. Um, but beyond that, it's just a matter of the fact of just waiting on the PSA. And they're not sending to anyone, even their higher members. I'm a, I'm a platinum member. It's my first time doing PSA. And right now it's been a very uneventful, unhappy experience with them. And and I'm just, you know, if I were to run a business and I had people who paid a certain price to be a certain level of membership and have also sent in, ser you know, paid for services and sent things in before the pandemic and stuff hit affecting the card service, um, you need to fill their orders out. You can't just backlog them and only work on the other people the higher end people who are paying you know the high end prices all the celebrities all the high end YouTubers like you, it, it's not how you do business and that's what they're doing and they're they're blaming COVID when COVID has not affected their working standards now COVID has affected in terms of the amount of cards they're getting based because it's just a market that can work even due to the COVID pandemic but you have to say it what it is man like and I can see through this stuff because it was my major, just business communications, and I can see how they're purposely trying to set a ploy and try and set up this scheme and, like, agenda. You know, hey, it's not us, it's COVID, when it is them. They're purposely picking to play over people because people are paying high-end amounts, and that's true, and there's, a, there's an expectation to that. But you still have to fill out your end of your contract. That's a contract where people pay for that service that was set and agreed upon so they're failing to meet their contracts and then they're also not giving any retribution right now if i were to give the psa a grade myself between one through ten they would get a one um that seems really really rough but if you're failing to meet contracts on purpose which is what they're doing it, it's okay to change your timeline but they still have things listed at 30 to 40 business days and if you buy into it, that's not what you're buying into. So they haven't changed their timeline. They did eventually remove some of their options and just give you the higher end options, which they expect you to pay more. So they're taking advantage of the fact people want their stuff graded. They're taking advantage of the fact that they're not giving you any sort of actual timeline for stuff that's already been paid for. And then on top of that, they're actually not meeting their timelines for their faster stuff. So they still need to adjust either their prices and or their timelines and or both. If you originally charge $200 for a two business day turnaround and you cannot meet that two day business turnaround, you need to adjust your price to be about $100 and you need to change it to about, you know, let them know it's a four day business turnaround. We've adjusted our prices and we've let you know the timeline change to match this. Now, if you do want a two day turnaround, it's going to be $300. They need to change this. They need to put more and more on this on their site. They just have that general excuse disclaimer that says COVID has affected the speed of our operations. And it just, it's okay to have done that from the beginning, but now we're at like month nine to 10 that the PSA has been doing this. And they definitely have the time to you know, adjust the description on their website to adjust the services. They've had this time. They could have even done a little, hold on, you know, we'll be back to you. All of our options will be open within the next two days. Right now we're remanaging and rediscussing and reevaluating the timelines and prices for a new set of services during this pandemic. But they have chosen not to. They have simply just chosen, we will take your money, take your cards and wait. Now, granted, I'm gonna re correct myself for one part. The PSA does not charge you until they're done grading your cards. Great. However, you still have my cards. 
So if I wanted to, you know, revert to my option of selling them raw, I can't do it until you send them back to me. And that's double shipping stuff like that, things that cause issues, you having to refine them and pull them out of your program. So I'm basically set to wait. And then on top of that, since I'm waiting so long, and this is for multiple people, since they're waiting so long, and they originally had a plan of sending like how many cards in at a time, and to create this video flow slash cash flow of maybe 10 to 20 cards at a time, because it costs about 200, 300 bucks for 20 cards at a time, and then reselling those cards to turn around that profit to do more cards, they can't do that. And then we run into the issue like I'm gonna run into, to where I'm gonna send in 100 plus cards. That can cost me between $1,000 to $2,000 to send those cards in. I'm gonna get charged that $2,000 bill when I finally get all of those cards back. Now granted, I'm in a little bit stronger financial situation than most, and that's you know my plan and the way I'm having to execute this action. Well, on top of that, because I have not received my original 15 cards, I don't know what to expect for grades. I got those eights off that Blastoise and Charizard, but I still think that may have been done in favor of me based on my grader who felt bad for the services I paid for. Because even the PSA states that although they try to maintain a standard, their graders are subjective. So I still don't know what to fully expect. That was just two cards fairly high-end cards, um, probably the most valuable cards I've had come through here so far. I'm hoping maybe we'll find something more valuable or pull something more valuable. But regardless, my statement stands, the PSA's massive delay is not due to COVID. It's a second correlation to COVID due to an influx in the card market, but it is the PSA's decision to go ahead and push off the people who have paid for certain services or met certain services deadline to get things in before they turn those services off and they've just straight paused those services to go with the people who are paying for the higher end services. That is not right. You need to put those on pause and finish up the contracts that you have established with those people who are working on that timeline. And for me, actually, those 15 cards are paid for because those were the 15 vouchers I got for going platinum. So th that is a paid service. They already have my money for that, which is why they're taking their sweet time, which is why they're not doing those because the majority of that service they turned off comes from the vouchers that they send out for gold and plat memberships. So they have simply just chosen not to fulfill those services that are already paid for. They've basically taken our money and they're not filling their part. And I don't know if we can really come together as a community and work on this and really push against the PSA. We run the risk, of course, of losing the PSA, but I think sometimes it's good to take down giants like that. Um, granted, that will just reopen the market to BGS to be the only giant, and I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sorry, but no other trading card greater is as good as BGS and PSA. I know there's ones that are trying, and that's great, but they just don't meet the requirements of standards or hold to a grading standard as much as BGS and PSA does. But I'm just really surprised to find out that PSA is considered higher than BGS. BGS tells you what's wrong, and it uses pretty much the exact same case, and it knows exactly what they're looking at, and Beckett, Beckett Cards was the original people to really kind of hold up to Pokemon. So it's really kind of silly. PSA was mainly sports cards. And somehow they've dominated the Pokemon market. I don't know how. Supposedly some sort of rumor. But that could have been a marketing scheme based by the PSA. Uh, you learn about a lot of marketing schemes and, you know, Scandal and LaBelle uh, when you go through the communica business communication. So um, I feel as though that was probably a really good advertising scheme run by the PSA to hurt BGS. And it really did affect them. Uh, it's just that simple. Um, you can make fake stuff all the time. Logan Paul just did a fake video to where he bought a fake Illustrator card and then pretended to be mad about it, and he punched a window. Uh, some of you are saying, oh, well, obviously he was mad. He punched a window. He got hurt. He probably took in stride how much money he's going to get off that little one to two minute video of him tiling bought fake $150,000 to $2 million card and took into account that he was going to get some stitches and he probably already had health care. So those stitches probably cost him 50 bucks. And he probably made two to three thousand, maybe more, just for that one to two minute video for a card he knew was fake. Uh, so it, there's people who are playing you. It's just the way it works. There's a lot of fake YouTubers out there. There's a lot of fake media outlets. It's just the world we live in. 
and you really need to try and take everything into your own account and you know what's in it for them is mainly the main aspect you need to look for this has been a super long video I meant to only just do the series on art boxes but I got into my rant on the PSA there's still more about that um, I will cut off here I can't wait for some of my other stuff to come in hopefully it comes in before Christmas um, but we'll see uh, and um, I did try and pick up some more binders via eBay but the bids are really hot and really heavy and really hard so I don't think that's gonna work um, some of them kind of scandalous though uh, I don't know how I feel about the one I don't know if it was a snipe technology which is a thing on eBay or if it was someone using their buddy to try and keep the value of their cards up so uh, essentially what happened is I was closing out a bid on a binder of cards and uh, I was the last bid up to the last second and I had bid up to $450 and within the last second my thing immediately changed and it wasn't through a multiple of bids it was just one bid and it changed it to 850 which isn't how ebay works it's just so you know whatever the highest bid is would just slightly go over whatever the previous high bid is and i went and rechecked the bidding history to see what happened in that last second and the last bid before the 850 was me at 450. so it doesn't make sense that somehow they made it bump up at 850 and then on top of that, it doesn't make sense in terms of that this person wasn't on the bidding chain at all, and then all of a sudden, they bid it up to 850 out of the blue, and I would argue that there wasn't really $850 worth of stuff there, um, unless it would have been graded stuff. And uh, so yeah, there's a lot of sketchy stuff out there. Be careful. Um, it is pretty aggravating. I am, I do have my PSA 8 Shadowless Charizard listed for a lot. Um, more than what the current market is right now. The market had a spike and immediately fell back down, so I missed it. I really wanted to sell it for eight grand when they were selling for ten. Granted, they're now down to like three to four grand. So I, I've got mine listed, I think, for five to six on eBay. Um, why did I do that? Uh, why am I so high? Because eventually the market will come back up, and then I'll take it what I get for it. I'm not in a hurry. It's only an appreciating asset. Granted, a little bit slower than usual because a lot of people have been buying up Charizards and getting them graded. Sorry, I'm going to cut off. I will do this discussion for another video later. Um, we're going to go ahead and upload from here. Um, I will try and make sure that we have more discussing content. Also, I know you're just looking at a still um, thing of cards. I'm sorry. Uh, there's not much action on the screen, but uh, we will eventually change that one day, hopefully. Um, but for now, have a great day. Bye.